I'd like to welcome you to another episode of Mission Matters. My name is Adam Torres. You can follow me on Instagram at Ask Adam Torres. And if you'd like to apply to be a guest on the show, just head on over to missionmatters.com and click on Be Our Guest to Apply. All right, so today I have Theron Whitney on the line, and he's vice president and co-owner over at Zibio. Theron, welcome to the show. Hi, Adam. Thanks. All right, so uh, excited about today's topic. So we'll be talking about Thibio. I mean, or Zibio, you're going to give us a big overview on just what's going on in the overall um, trade show industry. I know events, you guys are getting busy again. I mean, this yeah. is exciting for context for everybody watching this. Um, we're recording this in June of of 2021 so things are really just opening up and uh, I think we're gonna have a good conversation about that but Theron just to get us started so we at Mission Matters we amplify stories for entrepreneurs executives and experts that's our mission here um, Theron what mission matters to you uh, being a part of our clients success <clears throat> my industry is in a, a field where what we do helps amplify our clients brand message and if they're successful companies like mine are successful so that's really important to us fantastic um well let's just dive right into your company so zibio first off um tell us a little bit more about the company and then we'll go into your background sure um, we started my partner and i started our company in november of 2001 so it was shortly after 9 11 and we uh, decided we had been working for another company at the time and we decided that uh, because trade shows were shut down for a short time at that point that we would rather work for ourselves and take the experience that we had gained from years of working for other mm -hmm. people and apply it for our, our own company so you know nobody was paying us so we figured if no one's going to pay us we might as well not pay ourselves and be closer to home um, but fortunately, uh, in January of 2002, the business started coming back and we, we picked the right time to start our company because people needed our services uh, right away and they were renting booths and they needed uh, help with their trade shows and we just kind of hit the ground running. That's awesome. So let's go, let's go back a little bit. So um, prior to Zibio, like how did you get started really on this, um, um, this entrepreneurial journey? Like what'd that look like? Is this one of your first companies or did you have more when you were younger? Like give us a little bit of that feel. Uh, well, my background was sales. So mm -hmm. I started off in, uh, God, my, I think I was 20 at the time, started working in retail sales for Circuit City, selling mm -hmm. TVs and VCRs and things that uh, <laughs> a lot of people really don't have anymore. Walkmans, you know. Uh, Some of the Walkman. audience is like, what's a Walkman? That's what, that what little talking about? <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, it was all electronic sales. And uh, so I, I kind of, I got my feet wet in retail sales. And I, after I got tired of it for uh, about seven years being in it, um, a guy came up to me, a friend of mine who said, hey, there's this company uh, down the road that uh, sells trade show exhibits and they're hiring. Mm -hmm. You should check them out. And I had no idea what that was all about. So I, I interviewed and learned it was a commission only job. I'd never done that before outside sales, but uh, I was looking to really change my world. So I thought, OK, I'll take a risk and, and jump in. And it was amazing. It was so much fun. It, it tapped into my creative uh, abilities. It tapped into logistics and problem solving. Um, it tapped into what I learned in retail, you know, just kind of finding out what the client's objections are and what do they need to be successful. And it was also business to business. So it was a different level of clientele that I'd never experienced before. And I, I found a really really adapted to that well and enjoyed it and i did that for uh, another seven or eight years working for other people until i met my partner and uh, she and i worked for the same company for a while and then as i said we decided well we could do this on our own and stay close to home and mm -hmm. uh, so that's what we did we just kind of ventured off onto our own Wow, I love it. I mean, uh, I won't call it quite an uh, an accidental entrepreneur, but what I like about this story is that like it was never your 
your dream to go out there, start this company, do other things like you, you saw a niche, you went after it. Um, right. And we all learn from the, from the ups and the downs, sideways, like everything in between. So um, I don't want you to take this as a loaded question, but um, I think it's valuable for our audience. So like, if you could go back and, and talk to that Theron that was just getting started, like, you know, young and green, just getting going, um, what kind of things would you tell him? Oh, man. <laughs> I told you, I don't want you to take it as loaded, but I want to know, what would you tell that young Theron? <laughs> well, I'm sure we'll get into it, but um, prepare for the uh, unknown. Mm. Pre prepare for what you, you know, whatever possible disaster might be out there, whether it's natural or, or economic or mm -hmm. whatever the case. Uh, that's the one thing that really caused my partner and I to to think on our feet and, mm. and really, if we had the information back then that we had now, we would have definitely been far more prepared. So it didn't hurt as much, but we survived. So, you know, we figured it out. So let's go more into uh, the nuts and bolts of, uh, of Zibio. So tell us a little bit more about the, the company structure, like culture, like give us a little bit more about the, uh, the behind the scenes into the company. Sure. Um, well, when we started, uh, my partner and I had decided that the, the motto that we needed to take uh, is just be good kids. And mm. we learned early on working for other people that, you know, you've, you, you've got to maintain a level of integrity. You've got to earn your client's trust and really go the extra mile to, to take care of whatever need they have. And just be good kids is kind of a motto. It kind of sounds silly, but at the time we were in our early thirties and we were dealing with uh, customers and vendors who were 10, 15, 20 years older than us. So mm. in our eyes, we thought, oh yeah, we're just kids in this. Um, but we also applied it to our, our company's philosophy and taking care of our employees. And we treated our employees like family and always did what was right for them and for their families. Mm. Um, so, if if somebody you know had some family issues they had their their kids were sick and they needed the time off uh, we're a small company so mm -hmm. uh you know we don't we're not under the rules of a lot of larger corporations but we acted like a large corporation and, and wow. said oh absolutely you take that time off take off however much time you need um you know giving extra bonuses at the end of the year maybe the company didn't make a lot of money but we still wanted to make sure that everybody had a little extra money at the end of the year for mm -hmm. the holidays um, we opened up uh, our company kitchen for everybody uh, at the time my my partner was actually fixing lunches from time to time for people kind of like a again a family feel we would do barbecues um, every other friday for the guys so we really wanted to try to to get that family feel and that camaraderie mm -hmm. Uh, and just take care of our, our employees. So that kind of fell into that, you know, just be good kids uh, scenario. Man, that's great. Sounds like a t-shirt. Just be good kids. I'm there. <laughs> yeah, might as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It sounds like a t-shirt. It's one of those things that it's like, come on, you, you know what, what to do. Like, just be good kids. Do it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, so tell us a little bit more about the, about the business and the framework. So like, what kind of clients do you typically work with? Like, is this, uh, do you serve primarily like large, um, clients, enterprise level? Do you work with small businesses like industries? Do you, are you industry agnostic or, um, do you work with one more than the other? I mean, cause trade shows huge industry. I mean, so tell us a little bit more about that. Well, Early on, again, this this was part of our business model. We chose not to focus on one particular industry. Mm -hmm. We had seen companies like ours actually collapse because they focused oh, wow. on like all like companies in uh, Silicon Valley. They would focus on just all these dot com companies in the early two thousands. And when the dot com you know bust happened, there were companies that that closed up because they didn't have any other source of revenue. Mm -hmm. um, so what we did is we just looked at every industry and every industry has a trade show. So we would just look up uh, different industry shows and say, oh, okay, well, XYZ company is near us. Let's call them for that show. And hey, this other company is in concrete. So let's call them. They've got a show uh, in June. Uh, we've got uh, the auto industry or we've got medical, pharmaceutical, mm -hmm. um, children's toys, uh, the natural food. I mean, any anything that you can think of, there is a trade show for it. And so we just kind of branched out and saw 
what trade shows are happening every uh, every other month so we would have time to build a booth at, uh, mm. design it and, and get it ready and then send it out to a show and over the last 20 years what we've done is we've built up a clientele where we can have a continuous flow of business every year because we don't touch on just one industry we touch on all of them wow that's awesome um and i get it and that makes sense and when you when you were saying like the dot-com thing like my, my heart dropped for a moment i'm like oh it seemed like a great niche to pick and to put all your chips on that one but uh we nobody knew what was going to happen at that point right i mean so um tough tough for those businesses that unfortunately felt what they felt and right. uh, as you said earlier, like being prepared and, and understanding some of the ups and downs of just what, what could happen. I mean, so right now, as I mentioned earlier, we're um, recording this in 2021. Um, I know when we were talking in the pre-show, you said, man, things are starting to get busy. Things are starting to pick up. Um, tell me a little bit more about that. Like, how are you coming on the other side of this whole pandemic and thing when we weren't able to have trade shows for a long time? You know, I've got 20 years to look back on, and I can tell you this was the worst experience that uh, oh. our business, our industry has ever had. They, there's never been hmm. uh, in, in a year's time shows that would just close down for a year. You know, 9-11, there was just a small yeah. window, a couple of months where shows had to close because nobody could travel, but nothing like this, you know, where there's just nothing and it devastated our industry and in not just trade shows. I mean, mm -hmm. events also outdoor events, um, you know, uh, fairs, everything that has to do with people getting together in a closed space with large groups. Uh -huh. So with um, trade shows being down for about 15 months, I think it is mm -hmm. um, as of March of 2020 they were shut down and they just started coming back late may um right now there's actually one of the biggest trade shows um in vegas that's that's happened the Con world of concrete um mm -hmm. all reports from that show are saying that it's well attended lots of exhibitors uh, i've seen pictures of that show where people are coming back in droves which is exciting for wow. a company like me that i can see that hey you know there people are confident they're going back to the way things were so that's that's fantastic but you know for 14 months 15 months we had to figure out what else we're going to do and in the beginning it was uh, creating hygiene barriers we we have a shop so that was helpful that we could actually custom make hygiene barriers something that maybe you couldn't get online so local businesses could come to me and say hey i've got this specific size and this specific need and can you design and build something and we could knock it out real quick um, then after that, it was uh, creating, um, well, I designed a COVID, what we called COVID care room. So our mm. thought was that uh, there was going to be this huge influx of patients that would overwhelm hospitals. So we designed a, a modular portable room that would be better mm. than a tent that would go up and the room would be sealed and you could, um, you could apply monitors to the walls and you could put... Uh, uh, any type of fixture onto the wall using our type of, of modular systems, but the overflow didn't really happen the way that we thought it would. So that just kind of petered out. And, and then uh, when trade shows continuously still weren't coming back in the fall, mm -hmm. we switched our business model to a video marketing style. So yeah. we cleared out our showroom, I remodeled it and turned it into a studio. And we actually had some, some good success with that. And so people were having virtual trade shows basically in our showroom, our studio. And we were able to put on a show for a couple of clients where they could either do um, product demonstrations and then live stream it to uh, clients through YouTube. Or we had one client um, who actually had a 35 minute show where we did some of the recording here in our studio. We did some in Las Vegas, some in Florida, some in LA. We did a factory tour and then edited it all together, uh, you know, and, and gave it a, an actual uh, Hollywood feel, 4K quality uh, presentation. And client was blown away and he was real happy with it. 
That's absolutely amazing. And uh, a question that I was kind of holding back for you from, from when we've talked previously is, um, and fi first off, I'm so happy to hear that people attended that concrete show in droves and that it was a big success. Cause I, I mean, this is just great that it, that things, uh, you, you see people going back to normal in terms of wanting to be in public places and together and all these things. I think it's great. Um, that being said, do you think that, um, I, this is my personal thought is, um, do you think that the, the advent or adding the video component to this is just going to enhance the trade show industry overall. Like, do you think there'll be more events or more people will do video? Like, is it expanding the market? Is it kind of, um, is it going to be the same? Like what you've been doing this for a long time. I'm just curious to hear your input. Um, yeah, I think the, the way it, it looks like it's going to be, uh, COVID has really, um, caused people in my industry to, to look at other avenues and how to hype, you know, create a hybrid experience mm -hmm. for a brand. And what we're seeing, or what Zibio that is, is seeing is that we have customers who are saying, you know, we're going to do this show in September, October, but uh, we may not be able to get all of the customers from Europe or all the customers from uh -huh. Asia to come in. So what if we take your studio Zibio and we just bring it to the show and do a live presentation from the trade show floor? So that's that's kind of where we're we're seeing the trend where they might do a combination of physical events plus virtual events. And uh, if clients can do that on a scale where it's interesting to their customers uh, and different or unique, uh, that they can tune in, um, you know, that's even better for them because they're, they're just expanding their brand awareness. Mm -hmm. Man, that makes so much sense. A hybrid model makes so much sense. I mean, obviously we like those, you know, those um, individuals be able to fly in from Asia and other places, but um, if they can't, they still get the information, still make the contacts. And uh, over time, who knows, some may prefer that and they'll be able to then in fact participate in more things where they had to take off more time. Now, now maybe they can do two trade shows or three instead of one because they only had the travel time for that. So I feel like there's just going to be a lot of possibility going forward. Yeah, there really is. Man, that's awesome. Um, so I have to say, so so what's next? What's next for Zibio? Like what what what's on the docket? Um, what what are the plan? We're, we're end of twenty twenty one coming up, or I should say, the next, uh, third quarter, fourth quarter coming up. Um, what what's next for you? Holding on tight. Uh, we just <laughs> survived a drought, and all indications are we now have a flood coming. So it's it's actually it's exciting. It's incredible, mm -hmm. and a little unnerving to see uh in october i would say we've got probably 40 to 50 percent of our business is going to happen uh in october <laughs> yeah and we're normally that time frame is like 30 maybe 30 percent and uh there is a trade show happening maybe one or two trade shows happening every weekend and they're all huge and you know because we've got people who had to move their spring shows into the fall or mm -hmm. there was already a fall show or it was in the summer and it got bumped to the fall so we're we're scrambling to get our staff back uh we're scrambling to uh make sure we've got the inventory for our rental systems and just contact and reaching out to clients now to say hey there's a storm coming and we need to get you handled now and get you off into the advanced warehouse at the show so you're guaranteed to have something and uh you know oh, and the other thing is is that we've been reaching out to other exhibit houses because mm. um there's exhibit houses that unfortunately weren't able to um yeah. stay in business but the owners or the sales reps of those those companies they're still in the industry and they're looking for ways of taking care of their clients so we actually have a, a percentage of our business that we do for other exhibit houses mm -hmm. you know and so other exhibit houses will come to us and say hey you're close to la or you're close to las vegas it's easier for me to have my client just rent from you and you take care of all the logistics uh, so, you know, we work with and partner with uh, several exhibit houses, uh, event marketing companies, uh, and just regular individuals and help them take care of their clients. Man, this is great. I love it. And I love to see um, business owners coming together like this, like in finding synergies and finding ways to ultimately take care of their clients and provide value, really. That, that's what you're doing across the board. Um, so. Oh, yeah. 
excited about that. Um, so Theron, that being said, um, if somebody's watching this, um, so two part question here, final question. Uh, so if somebody's watching this and they wanna learn more about Zibio, number one, how do they do it? Number two, um, what's typically the right type of person that's a good fit to work with a company? Anybody who's trying to market their company or their brand or their product to other businesses, in most cases, will go to a trade show at some point because that's the best way to, to reach uh, big companies, big corporations, the buyers who, who might be interested in your product. So we've taken care of companies as big as Smuckers to as small as, you know, mom and pop uh, realtor down the street. Uh, yeah. it, it really doesn't matter what size a company is, we can still take care of them. And they're going to go from either a 100 square foot booth to 2000 square feet. We have the capabilities of, of helping all of those, mm -hmm. those customers and the experience. So there's nothing that um, we haven't experienced really, mm -hmm. especially after uh, this past year. So I'm confident that no matter what the size of the company is, we can certainly help them. And, and in that regard, we don't just do trade shows. We've mm -hmm. also expanded into uh, commercial interiors and retail uh, design and uh, restaurants. So we build out restaurants. Uh, we've built out a salon downtown Ventura. Uh, we've mm -hmm. done uh, storefronts, window displays at, in New York City. So we kind of just do it all. If, it's, if it has anything to do with uh, 3D marketing, branding, mm -hmm. we, we can take care of a client. Fantastic. And, and so what's the best way for people to follow up? Um, best way is probably go to our website, uh, www.zibio.com. Um, take a look at some of the examples of what we've done and then just reach out, you know, call us. Uh, they can uh, get our phone number on the website. Uh, it reaches by email, sales at zibio.com. Mm -hmm. And we're pretty responsive. Uh, both my partner and I are dialed into uh, the emails all the time. So as soon as we get some uh, question from a client, we try to respond within 24 hours or less mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, start asking questions about what they need when their show is, what's their budget, you know, what are they trying mm -hmm. to hope to achieve at the, at the event or if it's for an interior, what is the, you know, concept that they're trying to do and go from there. Fantastic. Well, Theron, really appreciate you coming on the show today and sharing more about Zibio and your mission and uh, happy to bring that mission to, to my audience and to everyone watching. As always, thank you for tuning in. If you are a first time viewer, don't forget, hit that subscribe button. We definitely want you to come back and see um, more great entrepreneurial stories and mission-based businesses. And Theron, thanks again for coming on. It's been a pleasure. Sure. Thank you, Adam. Appreciate it.